Father, we do thank you today, Lord, for your word. Lord, we are hungry for your word and hungry for revelation of it. We thank you today that as your word comes forth, Father, that we will be edified. We will be equipped to do the things you called us to do. And Lord, we uh, ask you today for anointing and utterance for this portion of the service. And we thank you by the end of the service today that your people will be edified, that you will be glorified, and we do thank you for it in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. Um, Romans 14 and verse 17. And uh, we've been on a series for a few months now that we're calling Peace and Joy in the Holy Ghost. And this has been our foundation uh, scripture in this teaching. In uh, verse 17, it says, For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And of course, that's where we got the title of the series, Peace and Joy in the Holy Ghost. Um, go with me to John 14 then. John 14. Is it important that you and I walk in peace and joy. <laughs> we, we found out why it's so important early on in the series. If you missed services, go back and listen. You'll find out why it's so important. One of the reasons it's important is because of this, uh, because of the priority that God places on it in this verse. Um, he's saying the kingdom of God's not about meat and drink, but this is what it is about. And whenever you get ready to say the kingdom of God's about this, how many of you know you could say a lot of different things? Yep. Couldn't you? <laughs> and the truth is, the kingdom of God isn't just about one thing or just about a few things. It's about a lot of different things. But in this verse, he says it's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So right there, it should become a priority to you and I. Praise God. Now, John 14, 1 um, the last uh, few weeks, and we actually have been doing it throughout the series, we've been giving you some keys to walking in peace and joy. And uh, a few weeks back, we gave you the first one that we gave you a few weeks back was what you think on. And, and what you think about affects your peace and joy. How many of you have found that out? And then the second one we gave you is what you eat spiritually affects your peace and joy. The words that you listen to and give your attention to affect the level of peace and joy that you walk in. We, we, we spent a whole, whole Sunday talking about that. And then if you, if you go back, we started the series talking about how when you judge and despise people, that affects your peace and your joy. You didn't forget that, did you? <laughs> um, judging and despising people drains you of peace and joy. And then uh, another thing we talked about early in the series was, is that what you believe, your faith, affects your peace and joy. If you're confident God's going to do something good in your life, it brings you peace and joy. If you're unsure about what He's going to do or if it's going to be good or bad, it can be depressing to you and bring you down and cause you to worry. And so we've been giving you a bunch of different things that will affect your peace and joy uh, and all of them are important. Can you say amen to that? I mean, amen. you know, I mean, if you, if, if you sit there all day and judge and despise people, um, if you don't believe anything good's going to happen in your life, if you think on depressing, worrisome stuff, and if you just feed on social media and news all day, you are going to be a depressed soul. It doesn't matter how saved you are. Right. And so there are things you and I can do that affect the level of peace and joy that we walk in that we enjoy. Praise God. And then the, the one we gave you last week was uh, another key we gave you is to walking in peace and joy was what you yield to and what you resist. And uh, we didn't finish that up last week, so I wanted to uh, go a little further with this this morning. John 14, 1, have you found that verse? What's it say there? Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And then verse 27, he says it again. My peace I give unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. He said it again. Don't let your heart be troubled. 
Don't let it be afraid. Now, this phrase, let not, we would say don't let it. This phrase, let not, insinuates two big things. Number one, that your heart will try to be troubled. Because if it wasn't, if your heart wouldn't try to be troubled, he wouldn't say, don't let it be troubled, because it's not even going to try. <laughs> so you know right away, if you got a pulse and you're here, your heart's going to try to be troubled. Um, it's important in these verses you understand Jesus isn't, he didn't say, don't feel troubled. A lot of times people hear it wrong. He didn't say don't feel troubled. In fact, he's almost saying you're going to feel troubled from time to time. And when you feel that way, don't be that way. What's he saying? The passage by uh, translation. Do we have that passion translation on there? If we do, put, uh, put verse 27 on the screen. Passion translation says a good. It says don't yield to fear. Don't yield to it. Didn't say don't feel it. Because you're going to feel it. And your heart's going to try to be troubled. You already know that. Why? Because he told you, don't let it be. Um, let not insinuates two things. Number one, your heart will try to be troubled. And, then, and what did he tell you to do when your heart tries to be troubled? Don't let it. And so let not also insinuates that there is some pushback on your end required. Right? Yes. Some words I, I found when I was looking some things up. There, there's, it, let not insinuates resistance. Fighting back. <coughs> standing up to. Protest. Amen. I'm protesting. <laughs> troubled heart. I'm saying, no. No troubled heart. No troubled heart. I, I'm protesting. I object to a troubled heart. What it means is you don't just acquiesce. You don't just go, I'm afraid. I'm so afraid. I'm so fearful. You don't just, you don't just cower. No, let not means you stand up to it. And you go, okay, I don't think so. Not today. Not to, maybe yesterday. Not today's a new day. Do you, I mean, just two words. Let not your heart be troubled. You can see there's a bunch of Things going on there that are being revealed. It's going to try to be. And when something's trying to do something, the only way that it's not going to be done is if something else keeps it from happening. Right? And nothing wants to run into something that won't quit. Right? Nothing wants to go against an opponent that won't yield, right? And what fear and sorrow should find out about us is we're relentless. What the devil should find out about you is you may have been knocked down, but you're a person that gets back up, right? <laughs> Praise God, can you say amen to it? Come on, don't, don't let your heart be troubled. What's that mean? I'm not just gonna acquiesce. I'm not just going to say, well, you know, I'm just kind of a warrior. Always have been, always will be. I saw something on social media. It's been probably years ago now. Somebody talking about anxiety. And there was a post on there. And it was, I, I, don't, I don't know if it was from a Christian, if the Christian wrote it or a Christian, I don't remember what it was. But they talked about anxiety like a backpack that you carry around your whole life. And you can never really get rid of it. Because it's just you. <laughs> that is acquiescing. Yeah. To, that is not doing that verse. Hmm? Take that backpack, go over to the toilet, and throw the stuff in the backpack down the toilet. And then wear your stupid little backpack if you want to. But don't just cower. And now, why am I telling you about this? Because whatever happens in the world seeps into the church. 
And whenever there's an expert in the world and a dumb Christian, I'm so that's not nice, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> whenever there's an expert in the world and then you have uh, maybe, uh, I'm struggling for the right word. <laughs> Ignorant, yes, that's probably better. Ignorant Christians, what they'll do is they just go, well, uh, this expert said it. And they went to college for eight years. So we should just listen to what they say about it. No, we're not going to listen to what they say about it if what they say is doesn't go along with what the Word says. <laughs> it doesn't matter what kind of expert they are. But, they, but, but they, they talked about it like, I just have to live with it. I'll never really get over it. And now one, two, phrases that you hear, I, I hear them in teenagers' mouths. Our teenagers will post stuff and they'll use this phrase, my anxiety, my depression, mine, possessing it. Is that the same thing as not letting your heart be troubled? That's two different things. And so we don't need to be hard on a teenager. You understand? They don't know. But as, as believing parents, grandparents, things like this, we teach them. No, it ain't yours. Now, I'm not saying you're not getting attacked by some right now. You may be. But, but we're going to show you how to run it off for good. Because <laughs> we have an order right here in this verse that says, if your heart tries to trouble, you don't stick that troubled heart in a backpack and carry it around. It says, push back. Don't bow. And so a major key to walking in peace and joy is not yielding to fear and sorrow. This is a major key to it. Can I just get it by a show of hands? Has anybody in here ever felt any of these things? Fearful, sorrowful, anxious, or depressed? Okay, so we're talking to the right people. <laughs> a major key to walking in peace and joy is not yielding to that stuff. Right? Um, if you feel afraid, if you feel anxious, if you feel sorrowful, if you feel depressed and just yield to it, you're going to have it. How many of you ever had a pity party? Do you know when it started? It started when you started yielding. Do you know when it ended? When you stopped yielding. It started with you, it ended with you, and I'm guessing nobody showed up to your party. <laughs> nobody wants to come to one of those. <laughs> and so, one of the reasons why people today in the world and in the church are being taught to just, you got to just manage your anxiety. You just got to manage this depression. And it's yours, and you're probably never going to get rid of it. And what they don't realize is it's teaching you to yield. It's not teaching you to push back. And Jesus is saying this, when it comes, you push back. That's what you do. You don't yield. You don't call it yours. You don't bow down. You push back. And, and the reason why so many are having so many problems with these things is because they haven't been taught to push back. They've been taught you can't help it. You might as well just learn to live with it. That's yielding to it. Can you say amen to this? Let not your heart be troubled. Is a lot different than you can't help it. Just lay down and let it eat you up. That's a lot different. He also didn't say this. Well, put verse 1 back up there. He also didn't say this. Pray and ask me to get rid of your troubled heart, and I will. Mm, 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 mm. And that's what a lot of Christians do. Lord, just to, and I'm not making fun of people. People, they just don't know. You hang around here, you're going to find out. I'm not making fun of anybody, but that's their prayer. Lord, just take this anxiety from me. He doesn't want your anxiety. Nope. <laughs> Jesus already bore the chastisement of your peace on the cross. He don't need to take it. He already took it. 
That's not how you get rid of it. Well, I just wish the Lord just get this depression off me. Um, that's not how you get rid of it. <laughs> you act on these words. There's a scripture in Proverbs that talk about, talks about if you don't pay attention to the law, talk, it, it was talking then about the Old Testament law, but in, in our application, the word of God, if you don't pay attention to the law, it said even your prayer is an abomination to God. You've got people doing that all the time. They don't care what the word says. They just want God to fix their problems. <laughs> and God is saying, I'm showing you how to get rid of this right here. And I will help you to do what I told you to do. But you are not going to override what I said with desperation and so-called begging in prayer. Right? Now, somebody might pray to God like that, and he might say, nor smoke church. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost series. Learn something. He might help him like that, or maybe not. You know, it doesn't have to be our church. You understand? There's other good churches. But, but he, he'll, he'll lead you to an answer. But there's only one way you're going to get free from this stuff, and you're reading it right here. <laughs> there's not a, you can't ask God, do you have, is there a second option here? <laughs> This is it. And a lot of times people are so overtaken by these things is because they're taught to yield to it and not taught to resist it. And the more you yield to it, the stronger it gets. What the world calls so called, so called clinical stuff are severe depression or stuff like this. What, what has happened is a person has yielded to it over an extended period of time. And maybe because they didn't know, I'm not being hard on somebody, they weren't aware of what they were doing, but that's how it gets bigger, yeah. by yielding to it over time. You yield to the Holy Ghost over time, his things get bigger in you, yeah. right? And so it's not, it's the devil at work, and he's obviously doing it, but we're giving him too much credit sometimes. Can you say amen to this? Yeah. And so what, what we need to do is this. Feel it and then resist it. Feel and resist. Never feel and yield. Did you hear that? You can't get rid of feeling it because you're going to. Just suck it up and get used to it. <laughs> huh? You might feel depressed and fearful and angry and upset and bitter and hurt all before the end of the day today. So, now what are you going to do? I feel it and resist it. I don't feel it and yield to it. Feel and yield is, is the, one of the world's big messages. Feel like a woman? Go get you a dress. Right? You feel like you're not in love with your, house, your spouse anymore? Go get a divorce. You feel like a man? Go be one. Because that's how you're true to yourself, just doing whatever you feel. And now it's spilled over to, if you're depressed, you're depressed. What are you going to do? I mean, get some medication and see a therapist and hopefully you can, you know, but I can't help how I feel. Are you sure? You can't help the feelings that try to attack you, but you can help what you do when they come. And just because you feel sad, you don't have to be sad. Just because you feel afraid, you don't have to be afraid. Just because you feel upset, you don't have to be upset. Just because you feel like somebody hurts you doesn't mean you've got to walk around hurt your whole life. Hmm? That all falls under the troubled heart. You, we have to uh, learn to absorb the blow of the feeling, but not yield to it. I mean, can you take a punch? That's the question. Uh, praise God. Absorb the blow of feel and sorrow, fear and sorrow. Feeling it, and instead of yielding to it, you push back against it and you tell it no. You tell it no. Is that what he's telling us to do here? He's not saying that you'll never feel it. He's not telling you not to feel it. He's saying when you do, absorb the blow. Boom. Oh, man, I feel, 
I feel a lot of different ways right now. <laughs> but I tell you no in the name of Jesus. I got an order from the head of the church to not let my heart be troubled. That's an order. Don't let it be afraid. I follow orders, not feelings. And so he's telling us what to do. And uh, how many of you think that would work? <laughs> Praise God. It would. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying you experience the results instantly all the time. You push back a little bit and you might feel a little bit more depressed. Huh? What should you do? Well, I've been resistant for two days and I still feel depressed. It ain't time to start, start yielding now. If you feel that way resistant, just imagine how you're going to feel yielding. That's going to get worse. <laughs> you got to keep going. I got an order. That's right. you, you need to... You need to work, don't, don't take this literally, but you need to be feelingless when it comes to following orders. And I don't mean you don't have them, I just mean you don't pay attention to them. Smith Wigglesworth, uh, how many of you have heard that name before? He, he was an anointed man of God, preaching in the 19, early 1900s. And, uh, he had healings and miracles and all these things. And somebody came to him one day and they go, Smith, how are you feeling today? And he was, a, he was a sharp man from what I, from what I learned and understood. <laughs> he was very blunt and forward and strong, strong will. Um, now, just because he had miracles in his ministry doesn't mean he necessarily should have been like that his whole life. Right. I don't know if he was or not, but don't, I heard somebody go, yeah, that's me. I'm just blunt and forward. Yeah, you need to be uh, a little bit better gracious about being gracious yeah, that's and true. shut your mouth sometimes well, yeah, that's right. and be kind like the master who was meek and lowly of heart and gentle. So, praise God. <laughs> I perceived your thoughts. No. Um, <laughs> and they, they said, Smith, how, Smith how, how are you feeling today? And he goes, Smith Wigglesworth does not ask himself how he feels. He tells himself how he feels. Yes. That's something right there. Yes. Tell yourself how you're going to feel today. <laughs> and uh, it'll work. Uh, go with me to Philippians chapter 4. Are we doing okay so far? Yes. Will you feel some things? Yes. And if you yield to what you feel, I hope you like it because you're going to have it. I hope you like it. Because whatever you yield to, ta-da. Whatever you resist, you will get rid of. About 15 years ago, I met Amber, and a few months in, I felt like I loved her. And I've been yielding to it ever since. <laughs> Didn't resist it once. <laughs> could I have resisted when I, could I oh no, I don't, I don't, I don't want this. I could have, and, and we wouldn't be here today. Not like that. If you yield to something, make sure you want it, because it's going to hang around. Now, um, many believe they can't help but be troubled. What did Jesus say? He said, don't let your heart be troubled. A lot of people don't believe that, that that's possible. They, don't, they believe, I can't help it. I'm troubled, I'm upset, I'm, I'm afraid. How many have ever felt like that when fear's been attacking you or depression or these things? You feel like, I can't help it. Um, and that belief, the b believing you can't help it, will keep you from being free from it because believing you can't help it will cause you to yield to it and not resist it. If you think you can't do anything about it, then you're just going to lay down when it comes. A lot of people think, well, I, I can't help it. The doctor told me I'm clinically this way. So I, I can't help it. They'll, they'll say things like, well, I, I can't help it. They, they did a scan on me, and I have a chemical imbalance in the brain. So I, I can't do that verse, Jesus. I have a note from my doctor. <laughs> he said, I'm chemically imbalanced. So I, here, see? You believe the doctor, don't you? And I, again, I'm not making fun of anybody. 
Part of getting free from this stuff is waking up to the reality that as a believer, I have authority over this. And that's all we're trying to do is wake people up to that reality. I don't have to live under the thumb of this. And um, our many, obey, many say, well, they're circumstances. You know, like, I'm tr yeah, of course I'm troubled. Look what's going on in my life. And if you were in my shoes, you'd be troubled too. Only if I let myself be troubled would I be troubled in your shoes like you're doing. <laughs> but did you notice there are no addendums or amendments or notes under this verse about don't let your heart be troubled unless you have a note from the doctor? <laughs> don't let your heart be troubled with as long as you don't have any bad circumstances in your life. The other verse I was going to read you is Philippians 4, 6. It said, uh, be careful for nothing. The Amplified Bible says, do not fret or have anxiety about anything. Hmm. Um, is that possible? Now, again, he's not saying you'll never feel this way. He's saying never yield. Never yield. Do not fret or have anxiety about anything. Philippians 4.4 4 said rejoice always. Can you? What if you, what if you? what if you got chemicals in your brain that say you can't? Can you? This needs to be said here, and I think if the Lord allows us to, we'll talk some about this. We'll probably take a, a service and talk about it. Depression and anxiety are not functions of the brain. They are functions of the heart, not the blood pump, the inner man. Jesus did not say, don't let your brain be troubled. Did you hear me? In talking about being troubled and anxious and distressed, he didn't reference your brain. Because your brain has nothing to do with it. It shows up in your brain when you yield to it. And doctors say this. So if you don't believe me, sweetheart, believe a doctor. And at least believe Jesus. I mean, if, it, if, it was, if the brain was the problem, Jesus would have said, if your heart's troubled, go get your brain chemicals balanced. Then it won't be troubled anymore. What doctors have found out is... It's not the chemicals in the brain that causes the depression. It's the depression and the anxiety that causes the chemical imbalance. I'm not making that up. <laughs> I'm just, some of you are like, I don't know about that. Go look it up for yourself. The, the doctors, how many of you believe in evolution? You know why you don't? Because it's not true. And do you know evolution is a theory? You know what something means when it's a theory, right? You know what that means? It means it's unproven ideas of men. It's unproven. And it, evolution will never stop being a theory because it's never going to be true. So it's always going to be a theory, an idea, something that they've been trying to prove evolution for hundreds of years and still can't. Do you know why they can't prove it? Because it ain't true. You can try for another 200 years. You still ain't going to be able to prove it. There is something called, not, not a name I gave it. You can look it up on, in Google. You can look it up. It's called the chemical imbalance theory. 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 That says you have mental health problems because of a chemical imbalance. That's an unproven theory. And one article even said, actually, doctors have proved that it's not true. <laughs> and so, don't believe everything you hear. These things happen in here. Spirit. When yielded to, it'll start to show up in your body, in your brain chemicals. Of course it would. But do you know, do you know by laughing? Fake or real? Chemicals in your brain start to change? <laughs> yeah. 
Now, hold on. So what comes first, the chemicals or the laughing? So it's not, it's not the chemicals causing the laughing. It's the laughing causing the chemicals. So don't tell me it's the chemicals causing the sadness. There are no verses when it talks about walking in peace and joy that ever references the brain. And if you're trying to fix your depression by addressing your brain, you will never address it. Doctors don't know what to do. They call depression and anxiety a very complex disease. But they know this, if we give you drugs, you get happier. So here, and people feel better when they get certain medications. That doesn't mean you got rid of the anxiety, just means you don't know it's there anymore. It's like caffeine. Somebody's like, I drink caffeine and I'm not tired anymore. No, you're still tired, you just don't know it yet. You're going to find out when the caffeine wears off. It's the same thing. I'm trying not to talk about this today, but you need to understand this. So, well, it's not, you know, I, I told him I had a chemical imbalance in my brain. Well, why do you have that? I don't know. Well, here, let's try this. Let's laugh a little. See if we can balance your chemicals out. Let's shout. Let's praise. Let's run. Let's dance. Let's do it for an hour a day every morning for the next month. Let's see if anything changes. Well, praise God. Now, I'm not telling anybody not to go take something or see somebody or, you know, you do what you're led to do. That's, that's between you and the Lord. But uh, I believe your answer's here. Praise God. Um, if you believe you can't help but be troubled, you don't believe the Bible. If you believe I'm depressed and I can't help it, you don't believe the Bible. Do you remember when uh, Jairus got that report that his daughter was dead, right? Do you think that would upset you at all? Put fear in you. Jesus looked at him and said, don't fear. Huh? Is that unreasonable? Jesus is trying to help him, isn't he? And so it's apparent right here, he can, right now, getting a report that your daughter's dead, you can help it whether or not you fear right now. Do you see this? That means you don't have to be afraid. And Jesus said, fear not, believe only, she will be made whole. I'd like some more details on that, on that walk home. Yeah. Yes. I, when I get to heaven, that's one of the things I'd like to get some more details on. I want to ask you, Iris, how was the walk from that statement to your house? I want to know what went on from there to there. <laughs> I do know there was some fear and not believing only going on. I just, I'd like to just know what else happened. <laughs> Come on, can you help whether or not you're troubled? And this is one of the big things you got to establish in your heart and in your life. If you want to walk in peace and joy, if you're not going to be troubled, you have to establish this belief that I can keep my heart from being troubled. Come on, say it with me. I can keep my heart from being troubled. Say it again. I can keep my heart from being troubled. I need to say some more stuff. I can keep myself, can keep myself from, being depressed, from being depressed, from being anxious, from being, anxious, from being, afraid, from being afraid, mad, mad sad, sad, hurt, hurt upset. upset. I, don't have to be. I don't have to be. If you don't believe that, you'll never walk in peace and joy. Because when those things attack, if you don't believe that, you're just going to yield. Because I can't help it. Well, maybe I wouldn't be hurt if they didn't hurt me. It's a choice to be troubled. Maybe they did hurt you. Stop being hurt. Quit, quit. In the script talk about don't be offended. Love doesn't take, quit, stop. You think you can't help it. And so you're going to be hurt until you realize, I don't have to sit here and be hurt, lick these wounds for 20 years. I can forgive them, let it go and move on. It's part of getting free. <laughs> Praise God. Now, the problem with this, and we talked about this, is so often fear and sorrow are accompanied by feelings of helplessness. It, 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 there's some other things that 
that experiences you've probably had that'll help you grasp this. Have you ever had uh, somebody did you wrong and you knew you were supposed to forgive them and then you went to do it and it felt like, I can't forgive them? Yeah, sure. It wasn't that you don't want to. It's like, I can't. I had this happen in my life one time. It's like, I, I can't. And I knew I could, but, but all my feelings were saying, I can't. But I knew I could, but my feelings were saying, I can't. Also, have you ever had this happen to you where you're getting bombarded with negative thoughts? Mm, sure. And it's like, you know, you know, I shouldn't be thinking about this. I need to cast this down. But it feels like I can't stop it. You ever had that feeling? Yeah. And this is how it can feel when people are being attacked by fear, sorrow, anxiety. That's why you don't, you don't want to be rough on people particularly when you're ministering to them on a one-on-one -on -one level, Amen. when they're dealing with these things. You want to push them to the Word, but you want to be led how, by how you do it because what they're experiencing is very, very real. And the feeling of helplessness that, that, that accompanies these things is very, very real. And there's even people that, that want to get free but just don't believe they can. Do you see this? And, and uh, praise God, Jesus, we, we referenced this last week, when he told Peter, when he told Peter, come, come walk on the water. He said, come, come. <laughs> now, before he told Peter to do that, Peter couldn't do it. Did you hear me? He could not walk on the water before the master said, come. Now, once Jesus said, come, Peter's been authorized and empowered to do it. And he can do it whether he feels like he can or not. And can you just imagine, I mean, if you read the scripture, it's interesting that the, the boat was being tossed. The scripture talked about the wind was tossing the boat. The waves were contrary. Fourth watch of the night. And so I, I don't know why I always imagine Peter stepping out of the boat and he's got two guys on each side holding his hands, making sure he doesn't go down on the first step, you know. And the water's like glass. This is not how it was. The ship's being tossed. And even if they're holding on to him at first, they've got to let go at some time. And he's not going to step onto the water until everybody else lets go. Did you hear me? They're not like, okay, let's try this. <laughs> Take both my arms. Well. No. Faith don't work like that. No, faith has no plan B. <laughs> Amen. And so, you know, but can you imagine he, so Jesus says, come, and he looks at the guys, he goes, I didn't really think he was going to tell me to come. <laughs> I just want to know if it was him. <laughs> now he said, come, so I got to come now. He already said, do it, so I asked him, so. Can you imagine him? Mean, he's stepping out, getting ready. I don't know what that boat looked like, but he's getting ready to step out, and his, his flesh is going, I just don't feel like we can do this. <laughs> I bet his hair was telling him, I don't feel like we can do this, buddy. His feelings are lying to him. He can do it. Whether he feels like he can or not. And when the master told you, don't let your heart be troubled, that authorized you and empowered you to do it. And you can do it, whether you feel like you can or not. And I'm not preaching just what I read in the Bible. I'm preaching stuff I lived. You can feel like, I can't get out of this. And if you listen real close, the Holy Ghost will go, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And this is where your freedom starts. You start believing, I can, I can, I can be free from this. And I don't have to let my heart be troubled. No, I don't. I don't have to lay in this bread and be depressed all day. No, I don't. I can step out on the water of not letting my heart be troubled. Can you say amen to this? Don't believe your feelings. They'll lie to you. You need to tell them something. Feel, oh, you're lying to me, feelings. You're lying. You're, you're saying I can't do it, but the Bible's saying I can do it. Either you're lying or God's lying. I pick my feelings. That's a lie. Right? 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that means if he's strengthening me to do it, I can do it. And if he told me to do it, then he'll give me the strength to do it. I can do it. I can do it. Can you say amen to this? Amen. Come on, say this to me. Say, I'm not helpless, I'm not helpless. against fear, against fear. Sorrow, sorrow, anxiety, anxiety. Depression, depression, panic attacks. Panic attacks. I'm, not I'm not helpless. I have been authorized. And empowered, and empowered by the head of the church, the head of the church to, not to not let my heart be troubled. And I can do it. I can do it. No matter how depressed I am. No matter if it's clinical. No matter if I've been shoving pills down my throat for the last three years. I can be free without that. I can get to a place where I don't need that anymore. I got, I got authorization from heaven that if fear shows up, if sorrow shows up, you stop it in its tracks. Huh? And when you step out to stop it, heaven goes boom and starts backing you. Yes, it does. And then it's not just you doing something, it's God backed. <laughs> And that's how you get free. Yes. See, it's not just willpower. Right. Your will is involved. You're going to need your will. You better bring it along. You're going to need it. But your willpower alone will not get you free. No. But I'm telling you right now, Peter had to decide, I'm either going to stay in this boat or step out on that water. I'm either going to believe and act on the words of the master or I'm going to sit in this boat. And when he, when he stepped and when everybody let go, the power came on him to do what he felt like he couldn't do a second ago. And this is what happens when you, see, to get free, you got to push back. That's your step. Your step is not onto water. Your step is to go, no, fear, I'm not going to let you trouble my heart. No, depression, I refuse to be depressed. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to praise. I'm going to shout. I'm going to run. I'm gonna, I won't be depressed. You just took a step. And it's the step that accesses the power. And it's the power that enables you to get free. And it doesn't happen sitting in the boat. It ain't going to happen laying on the bed. And it ain't going to happen in your therapist's office on the couch. It's going to happen when you open up your mouth and start saying, just because Jesus said, do it, I'm going to do it. That's when it comes. And that supernatural power will break depression off of you and make it a thing of the past. Can you say amen to that? But you got to take a step, don't you? You got to take a step. And how many of you know, Peter can sit in that boat and pray all day and prayer is not going to access the power. <laughs> Lord, just help me to walk on this water. I just, I wish I want to so bad. Help me, help me. I'm just asking you for help me walk on the water. No, no power is going to come on him like that. Being desperate doesn't access power. Begging doesn't access power. It's only one thing. Only one way to tap power to walk on the water, and it's to start walking. There's only one way to tap into power to get free from depression and anxiety, and it's to act out on that verse. Don't let your heart be troubled. Step. <laughs> you sit home and pray all day. Holy Ghost is going to go, okay, get up. Comb your hair, brush your teeth, go for a walk, smile, tell the devil no, quote a verse, lift your hands, be thankful for something in your life, which a lot of times is where depression and anxiety is rooted in, just being ungrateful. It's amazing how just being thankful just break that stuff off of you. And you'll, you're not going to get free doing nothing. <laughs> You got to take a step. Right? Praise God. Um, the problem is not that you can't keep your heart from being in trouble. A lot of times the problem is you don't believe you can. That's the problem. Because you can. I can. They can. That's not the problem. You can. The problem a lot of times is people don't believe they can. And so the issue then is not can, can I or can't I? 
can I or can't I keep my heart from being troubled? That's no longer an issue. Once Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled, that dispute has been settled. I can. Come on, say it again. I can. Keep my heart from being troubled. That is no longer the issue. I can be free from anxiety. I can be free from fear. I can be free from depression. I can be free from sorrow. I can be free from grief. The issue is no longer can I or can't I. He erased that dispute with that verse. Don't let your heart be troubled. You want to know what the issue now is? Will you or won't you? Did you hear me? That's the issue. Will I or won't I? Not let my heart be troubled. And that's for me to decide. And nobody's coming to help me with that decision. Huh? Nobody's coming to make that decision for me. You can be depressed as long as you want to. You can be sad as long as you want to. And you can enter into the joy of the Lord as quickly as you want to. Uh, let's, uh, I'm looking for some, I gotta, I'm going to show some restraint here and cut some verses out. So, uh, Go with me to uh, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. W what's the issue now? It's not can I or can't I. I just can't help it. No, you can. Now the question is, will you or won't you? Will you sit here and yield to fear or will you get yourself up and start pushing back on it. Will you sit here and, I'm just so mad at my husband. He's did this and did that and did that. Will you or won't you? Forgive him and let it go and enjoy your day. Or will you sit there and let it eat you up all day? It's your choice. Nobody's going to make that choice for you. Um, praise God. To rejoice. To be glad. To be glad? <laughs> to be glad? <laughs> to rejoice? Yes. To fear not? To not sorrow? Yes. It's a choice. Yes. Not a feeling. Huh? Yeah. Joy is not a feeling. It's a choice. Yes. It's a choice that if I make it, it'll affect my feelings. Yes. But it's not a feeling. To be glad. That's not a choice. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is a choice. That's not a feeling. That's a choice. To be sad. You're not a victim of sadness. You're not a victim of your feelings. To be sad is a choice. To be upset is a choice. Not a feeling. And you might feel upset, but you can choose not to be. <laughs> you might feel sad. You can choose to rejoice when you feel sad. I'll tell you what these things also are. To rejoice, to be glad, to fear not, to not be sad, it's also, those also are not the result of the right chemicals working in your brain. Well, I, I can be happy because my brain said I could. But if my chemicals say I can't, then I can't. Huh? Sorry, no. My brain isn't running this show. <laughs> huh? I am. Spirit me, led by the Holy Ghost. If he told me to not let my heart be troubled, I don't ask my brain if it's okay. If he told me not to fear, I don't say, brain, kid, is that, can we not fear today? No. Brain has to get in line. Chemicals line up. Whatever you have to do, I don't care. I'm not controlled by my brain. I'm me. <laughs> Spirit. And so, to be happy, I'm sorry, to be joyful, to be glad, to fear not, to not be sad, that's not a feeling. And it's not, it's not a result of some chemicals going on. I'm happy, so my chemicals are right. No, no, no. It's a choice. You can make the choice to rejoice when the chemicals are wrong. And if you make that choice, it can get the chemicals to be right. Amen. <laughs> it, it's so, it's so, we're going to have to talk about some of that. It's so fouled up. What, and it, it's so much the devil. 
He's the one that preaches against the Word. Of course He would tell you it's chemicals and you can't help it and here, just take the... Because He don't want you to realize that you have authority over Him. Yes. And over that. No. And if He can get somebody with a degree and a white coat on and looks like they got it together to tell you, he'll just think, well, you might just believe it, right? No, you got to stick with the Word. Right? Um, David, Psalm 23. Psalm 23, it said that uh, if, you, if you read through that or read some of the context, what you find out is David is running from his, for his life from King Saul and his army. Remember when he killed Goliath and saved the nation? And, and then what? Then the king wanted to kill him. So <laughs> that's what you get for helping. You understand? I mean... <laughs> And uh, this, was no, this was no little situation. He's, he's just whatever people argue about it, but I mean, he's a teenager, somewhere around there. I don't know, maybe early, late teens, early 20s, whatever it is. He's very young. And uh, let's be honest, I mean, he did defeat Goliath, but, you know, it ain't like he's been doing this for 30 years. And now he's running for his life from the king, and the scripture talks about the, Saul's army. Well, you know, Saul's army was all the Rambos, right? Those elite forces. So David is, you can imagine fear trying to be all over him. And in Psalm 23, 4, he said, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, come on, say this with me, I will fear no evil. <laughs> Why would you have to say that? Because he's feeling the fear crawl up his back. And he's saying, I, I won't do it. Is he, is he doing what Jesus said, you know, whatever, hundreds of years later in John 14, 1? He said, I, I'm not going to let my heart be troubled or afraid about this. In uh, Psalm 42, 3, David again, he said, my tears, verse 3, has, have been my meat Day and night. Is he having any feelings right now? Verse 5, he said this. He said, why are you cast down, O my soul? The word cast down actually means depressed. Why are you depressed, O my soul? And why are you disquieted in me? That means troubled. Why are you depressed? Why are you troubled? Hope in God, for I will. Say, I will. I will, I will yet praise him. For the help of his presence, you could say. There's another, I will. Is he feeling anything? And yet in the middle of it, he goes, I'm not going to let my heart be troubled about this. Now, he went back and forth on this in this psalm a little bit, but verse 11, he said this again, so he got it right. <laughs> Do you see what's going on here? He's, he's got all these feelings, but then we got a decision. In uh, Psalm, uh, 1 Samuel 30, verse 4, this is after David and his men had went to a battle and they came home and found that their families were taken, their, uh, their homes were burned, their possessions were taken. And it says in verse 4 that David and his men wept until they had no more power to weep. Is he feeling anything? Somebody go, you be weeping too? I mean, somebody took your family and burned your stuff. I can't help it. It's not what he did. He got hit with the emotion. He cried. But then verse 6 came. It says, David was greatly distressed because after he got done crying, his men wanted to kill him. You know, blame the leader. That's a very popular thing. Sure. Particularly in churches. <laughs> David was greatly distressed. For the people wanted to stone him. What's the last part of the verse say? But David encouraged himself <laughs> in the Lord. Who did it? He decided, I'm done crying. I'm done being stressed. I'm done with it. I'm not going to let my heart be troubled. There was a decision made, wasn't there? And our will... 
is so vital in walking in peace and joy. You have to make the decision to walk in peace and joy every day. And if you don't, you won't. He's having a lot of feelings in these verses. And then in the middle of it, you have this, I will not fear. I will praise God. I just read you a couple. Uh, he was greatly distressed, but he chose to encourage himself in the Lord. How long do you think, if he wanted to, when his family was taken and his homes were burned, how long do you think he could have been upset about that? He could have died like that. And it looks to me like it lasted maybe, I don't know, a couple hours. It stopped when he said, I'm not yielding anymore. Now, I'm not judging him for crying about it. I'm, I'm honoring him that he's turned it around this quick. Right? But it happened with a decision. And you can be depressed if you want to. If you choose to. And you can be anxious if you choose to. And here's the other thing about walking in peace and joy. It starts with the belief that I can keep my heart from being in trouble. And then it goes on to this. The next thing is, I will. I will rejoice. I will be glad. I will not fear. You can defeat fear and sorrow and walk in peace and joy with these two phrases. I can and I will. Did you hear me? Come on, say it with me. I can and I will. Say it again, I can, and I will. You have to make that decision every day, particularly on the days when you ain't feeling it, when you're not feeling glad, particularly the situations when you're not feeling really joyful. <laughs> huh? If you're feeling really afraid, particularly on those days, you're going to have to make a decision. And that decision is going to start with this. I can not let my heart be troubled. I can do that. I can not be afraid. I can, I can keep my heart from being troubled. Yes, I can. I don't, have to, I don't have to sit here like this. And then the next thing you're going to say is, I will. And what that is, that's the step out of the boat. When you say, I will rejoice, that's the step. When you say, I will be glad, that's the step. When you say, I will not fear, that's the step. And it's the step that accesses the power to break free from it. Yeah. Say it again, I can, I can. And, I and I will. I can, I can. And, I and I will. You, you might have been the most depressed person anybody's ever seen. That's about to change. Because you can and you will. And... The reality of, of the pressure, you know, those decisions are decisions that are made uh, in darkness. What I mean by that, they're decisions that are made in pressure when you don't feel it. When you have symptoms on your body or something, the devil's trying to put fear in you, that's when you make the decision. I will not fear. I won't. And when you do that, you just took a step. And it's amazing how the step always accesses the power. And when the power of God's accessed, you find out just how small that depression actually was. Because you see how quick it goes when, it's, when it encounters the presence and the power of God. Say it with me again, I can and I will. Say it again, I can and I will. And the reason you can is because Jesus told you to. And the reason you will is because you obey orders. Right? You can because he said you could. And I will because I obey orders. I'll close with this thought. Yielding to fear and sorrow. I heard, uh, heard uh, Brother Keith say this a while back, and he wasn't really talking about this. Just, I think it was just kind of a, a side thing. But he said it's, it's a cousin to stubbornness. Did, did you hear that? Yeah. Sitting there being sad and depressed is being stubborn. 
because you're told to rejoice. You're told to, you know, sit in there and just yield into fear. When you could stand up and push back against it, you're being stubborn. You're not obeying. <laughs> and come on, just for obedience sake, right? Just for the sake of following orders. I'm not going to just sit here and a lot of times people get stubborn about, I'm, I'm depressed. Man, I got a note from the doctor. I got medication. Google said I'm depressed. You're telling me not to let my heart be troubled. You're being stubborn. You're elevating your report and your symptoms above what the Word says. Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled, sad sack. So you need to, you know, let's go. Me too, if I'm being sad or depressed. I mean, let's go. I can't get the feelings to go away as soon as I start doing something, but I can start doing something right now. And I'm telling you, it, 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 it's a decision made in adversity and pressure when you're under attack. That's when the decision's made. And most people can't get free because they won't make that decision. When the feelings get strong, when the pressure gets tough, people break. We got to be the ones that in the middle of that will go, I will fear no evil. I will rejoice. Praise God. Go ahead and stand up with us. Praise God. Father, we do thank you for this today. We thank you for the authority that you've given us in your word to overcome depression, anxiety, fear, sorrow, and enter into the joy and peace of the Holy Ghost. We do thank you for it. We do thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Father, we come into agreement today over everybody in the building, everybody watching online. We don't know who's in the building all and who's all watching online. We don't know what they're dealing with, what they're experiencing, the uh, symptoms of anxiety, depression. Somebody might be dealing with a, lot, the, a loved one going home and being with the Lord or leaving their body. And Father, whatever it is, we know you and your word are the answer. And we know that by the power of the Holy Ghost, they can be free. They can be free. And so we, we come into agreement over them, over their lives. And we believe that by the power of the Holy Spirit, they're going to act on your word. They're going to push back against these things that maybe they've been yielding to. And they are going to enter into the peace and joy of the Holy Ghost like never before. Father, we thank you that those that have been bound by depression, by anxiety, by panic attacks, we thank you, Lord, they're getting free. Their day of deliverance is now. Their time of freedom is at hand. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. There's freedom. There's freedom, and they can be free, and they will be free by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we do thank you for it, Lord. We do thank you for it. Praise God. Praise God. Let's make a, a declaration of our faith as we're closing up the service today. Say this with me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I speak words of faith over myself today. And I say... I can keep my heart from being troubled. I can have victory over grief, over sorrow, over fear, over anxiety, over depression, over panic attacks. Yes, I can. I don't have to let my heart be troubled. I've been empowered. I've been authorized by the head of the church to not let my heart be troubled. And so I won't. I won't fear. I won't fret. I won't sorrow in the name of Jesus. Fear, sorrow, I tell you no in Jesus' name. Sadness, grief, hurts, you got to go in Jesus' name. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Panic attacks. 
Come on, say any panic attacks. You have to go in Jesus' name. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Somebody is getting free from panic attacks. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Your panic's going to be turned to peace. Your attack is going to be turned to rest. Praise God. Praise God. No, you're not attacked by panic. You attack panic. You attack it with the word. You attack it by the power of the Holy Ghost. You can run it off. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's somebody else has been dealing with fear about your kids, your grandkids. It's been a torment. It's been a weight. You're getting free from it. Yes, you are. You don't have to worry about them. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, can you say thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yes. Worry is going to turn to laughter. Restlessness is going to turn into dancing and praising. <laughs> Praise God. Your fretting is going to turn into running. You're going to run and shout and praise and dance and sing and, yeah, what you were worried about. It's getting flipped today. Flip it. Flip it. You can flip it on the devil. You can just flip it, and when he brings it up, instead of worrying and yielding to fear, you can just start shouting and dancing and praising and rejoicing and thanking God that he's going to do what he said he would do. You can just flip it on him. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. The devil tells you, you're going to die, and you go, praise God. Yes, amen. One day I'm going to step out of this body and step into glory. Whoa, we man, that's good news. That's good news. And I'm going to go when I'm ready. And I'm going to go in an old age. Praise God. Devil, thank you for reminding me I'm going to leave this body someday. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just flip it on him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The peace, I prophesy, the peace of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is bubbling up and bubbling over. It's bubbling up. <laughs> it's flowing out. <laughs> it's flowing over. You used to worry, and now you're going to laugh. You used to fret, now you're going to run. You used to be sad about it, now you're going to dance about it. Sing about it. Shout about it. Because you can and you will. Yes, I will. <laughs> I can just see the devil starting praise parties in your house. <laughs> he brings up a thought, you just start praising. He goes, oh, golly. Why did I even bring it up? I ain't hanging around listening to this. I'm out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Come on, say it again. I can. I will. That's the only thing you need right there. You already have the word. So now you just need a little can-do spirit and a little willing spirit. <laughs> That'll get you out. That'll get you over. That'll get you through every thought of depression, every thought of worry, every thought of fear, every thought of sorrow. I can I will. Praise God. Can you say thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Did the Lord help you today? We are, we are in agreement that this stuff is going forward into your life and people maybe we don't know they're watching. I'm believing we're going to hear some testimonies. I, I was bound and I got free. How many have ever been tormented by the stuff we're talking about? 
don't you know when the Lord freed you? Changed your life. Changed your life. Praise God.